Hi all, we're going to continue with our Cisco ASA labs and today we're going to configure radius authentication. Um, so in our topology here we have three segments, an internal segment on 10, 10, 10 slash 24 and our dot one user here is going to access our firewall for management. Um, on the DMZ segment there's a radius server, we're going to use that for the uh, uh, PC1 user to authenticate against in order to get access to the firewall. We have an outside segment that's just here to represent the outside. We're not going to really do any um, send any traffic to the outside. Um, so again, um, you know, we, we're going to have users access the firewall for configuration, and we want to authenticate those users against the radio server we have hanging off our DMZ here. Um, so we'll just get started. Um, so you know, because it is management access, we want them to use SSH as opposed to uh, Telnet because Telnet is sent in the clear right and we want them to uh, have an encrypted session so we're going to use SSH so before we get into the radius config we're just going to quickly configure SSH access there's really only two pretty easy steps we need to do a crypto key generate um, RSA modulus and uh, modulus is the key size we're going to make 1024 so we're just generating um, <clears throat> encryption keys for use with SSH and we just need to say where the SSH user is and, and who he is. So we're going to do SSH, our specific dot one host on the inside. So a 32-bit mask. And then again, he is on the inside, so we'll put inside like that. So that's it. SSH is uh, enabled for that one user, and the key's been generated. Um, I'm just going to quickly create a username. I'll talk about this in a minute. We'll make a user called test with a password of test. And I'll get back to that later, okay? So we're going to get into the radius config now. Um, so you need to do um, AAA-server <clears throat> and then a group name. So we'll use XAuth as the group. And the protocol for the group is RADIUS. Right? Um, so while we're in here, we'll just do a reactivation time. Uh, reactivation mode is timed. So what that means is, um, you know, if the server uh, ends up failing, for some reason uh, the firewall can't contact the server, the server will go down to a failed mode. Um, and the reactivation time is um, by default 30. So it'll just wait 30 seconds before it brings that server active again. That still may not be reachable, but it's going to say it's reachable and try and use it in 30 seconds, okay? Um, so we're going to go ahead and create a server itself now. Um, so AAA server, again, this is going in the XAuth group. Um, and here's if you don't specify an interface here, it's going to go with the inside interface by default. So our, our radius server is on the DMZ, so we're specifying the DMZ interface here. And then host and the IP of the radius server. Okay, so while we're in the host, um, see what we've gone down to host, right? Um, so we'll put in here, we'll put in key and then a key, and I made it radius key um, that we have in our radius server. So to authenticate to the radius server, you need to know the secret key, right? Um, and then I just got to change the authentication port. So um, when radius was first implemented, they used port 1645 and 1646, um, and those ports were reserved for another protocol. So Radius had to change, and they now use uh, 1812 for authentication and 1813 for accounting. We're just putting in the uh, off port because, again, we're only using it to authenticate users. Um, so we've made our uh, ra uh, authentication group saying we'll use Radius, protocol Radius, and we've put in a server in that um, to that group, right? And now we're going to the firewall tell the firewall that who we want to authenticate um, with Radius, by this Radius server, are people that are accessing the firewall itself for management, right, via SSH. So it's AAA authentication, um, and then your uh, uh, the access type, so Telnet or whatever, we're going to do SSH, and console here means the firewall itself, and then our group, XAuth, and then local. So recall I, I, I put in that um, username, uh, test with a password test. So what happens is um, the local database that's built into the firewall is going to be the fallback method to authenticate users accessing the firewall via SSH if in the event the the server in the XAuth group is not available, right? So um, as long as the server, uh, the firewall can contact the Radius server, then people's credentials will be sent there to be authenticated against the database and the server. If, however, the firewall cannot contact the server, then it's not going to be able to get an accept reject message. If you don't have a fallback method to authenticate the user against, then the user does not gain access until the radius server is reachable again. So our fallback method is the local database. Okay, um, that's really all you have to do. 
Uh, let's jump over to PC1 here and we'll try and access uh, SSH-L is login. So our login is Cisco on our radius server. Um, let me quickly do an SSH version uh, 2 over on the firewall and now we can do a dash V for version 2 and then the host that we want to connect to. So it's dot .50 on the inside, right? 10, 10, 10, .50. Um, so we'll try that. And we're in, you see, firewall one, excellent. Um, so let me just quit out of there. And let me do this, debug um, radius. We can do that, maybe that'll give us a bit more. Now let's quit out of there, try that one more time. There you go. So you can see um, we're in, again, firewall one down here. And then radius, the packet's been accepted. Um, so you know you get an accept or reject message back from the uh, to the firewall from the radius server. It tells what to do with that user. And we've got an accept, right? Um, <clears throat> so for example, let's go out of there. You know we had that, we made test test as the local uh, username password. So if we try an SSH with test, Right, it shouldn't fail over and actually work, and then the user uh, password was test as well. See, we're getting a reject from the radius server because the firewall can contact the radius server. He's sending him the credentials we put in the local database, and they don't match, so he's rejecting them. It's not going to fall back into the local database and check it when the radius server is reachable from the firewall, right? Um, so that's a good thing. But if we do this, we'll just uh, put in some junk here to break that session. Perfect. We keep getting rejects there, right? Um, and let's do this. We go into interface E2, which is our DMZ, and do a shut. And then we come over here and use our proper radius credentials with Cisco in there. Cisco username, Cisco password is my what I have on the radius server. You can see now this is going to come, uh, it's going to mark the server as down because I can't it can't actually contact the server to get there um, yeah see <clears throat> it's marking the server as down for the XAuth group um, so it knows the server is unreachable and it did not let us in with the, with the credentials we had marked for uh, you know that we have configured on the radius server but if we use the test credentials now because the radius server is not reachable, it should fall back to the local database. So test, test, and look at that, we're in, right? So it's used the local database. So you can do, um, in the firewall, you can do a show AAA dash server. It's going to show us all the servers we have configured. So we have the local database configured, which is active. Um, we had four authentication requests. Um, we had one accept and three rejects. That's through our testing, right? Our uh, group XAuth is Radius Protocol, our server here. It's currently active, again, because the 30 seconds had time, timed out and it brought it back to active. And you can see we changed the authentication port to 1812, remember? But we didn't we didn't change the accounting port, so still the default 1646. Um, and you can see, again, we have the requests, accepts, rejects, uh, timeouts, so on and so forth. Um, again, it's not actually active, right? So if we break out of there, and come back to use our Cisco, <clears throat> it's going to fail in the firewall. It's just bring back to active um, by the timer, but it's still going to fail out. Uh, I did that just for the purpose of the test so it would quickly come back active, right? Um, and I guess that's it. Um, you know, you can use the uh, the authentication. It doesn't have to be Radius. You can use TACAX, LDAP, Kerberos. There's a few others. You don't have to use it only to uh, authenticate users coming you know, into the firewall to manage it, but you can Authenticate users going through it for HTTP access. You can do um, use for SSL VPN access. You can use for IPsec VPN RAS access. Um, many ways you can use it, and there's many more ways to configure it than we than I've done it here. You can put multiple servers in the group, so instead of failing over to the local database, you can fail over to other authentication servers. The list goes on and on. If there's anything specific you're looking for, let me know. Maybe I can do a video up for you. Otherwise, uh, I hope you got something out of this video, and thanks for watching.